Greetings everybody from Terry here at D-Lab and Johnson Control. Got a Ranger on the bench today. This one came from Parker, Colorado. The guy received it, pushed to talk, was inoperative. He informed me that this Ranger has the Turbo Ranger modifications. So I'm sure there's going to be plenty of surprises in the audio section. I've already made a little laundry list of what needs to happen. Number one, the SO239 jack on the back of the radio is looser than a goose. It's not making good connection with the RF connector, so we need to replace that. Also, the VFO 18K resistor, Mr. Chernobyl, is still in there. Push to talk system obviously is going to have to be reworked. We're going to use the D Lab K2 push to talk module. And of course, I found some other changes in the push to talk circuit which are concerning. There's an additional wire harness for this new system that Sony installed. I'll show you that in a minute. I also found that there's not grid on 80 meters. I have some grid on 40, but the transmitter does not key up properly. It's only putting out about 10 watts. So this should be a good one. All right, before I tear into this Ranger, let's give it a quick look over. You see cosmetically, she is a bit challenged. But all the pointers are on the knobs, controls turn freely, including the VFO vernier, which is a great thing. I don't have to pull the front panel. At least I don't think so. Somebody replaced the modulator tubes with 5881s. Go around back side here, you can see there's been some work on the 6146 plate feed. And take a look at the power transformer. It's like the leaning transformer of Ranger, right? Obviously shipping jarred it. I'm going to have to try to uh, reseat that transformer. Here is the lovely push to talk system that is not working. And here are some of the additional wire harnesses that I'm going to have to sort through and see what this guy is up to. Underside, there's another little surprise I need to show you. Okay, let's do our underside sweep starting from the top and move our way down. This is the preamp section and the modulators. You can see there's been a lot of work done here. That's Turbo Ranger territory. I sure hope that all works. If you look up here where the two pin microphone connector is, there's some added resistors. I'm thinking that may have something to do with the push to talk that they installed. So maybe that could be pulled out when I install mine. If we go down here into the power supply section, you're gonna notice there's something missing. Yep, it's the modulation bias resistor. There's usually a big 20k resistor in here with a tap. So you set your modulator tube current. It's not here and I don't know where that negative bias adjustment is if there's one at all. It could be up on the keyer platform when they did their little push to talk thing. The keyer adjust might now be modulation adjust. I'll check that out. You can see our filter caps are some little radio guys. They are 450 volt caps with some balancing resistors. So we're going to leave that intact until I get this thing up and running. All right, plan of attack. First thing I'm going to do is replace the SO239 connector. This one is extremely loose. I don't want to damage the Ranger when it transmits. As I said, when it transmits, because right now it's not. Okay. I suspect that's because of a faulty push to talk system. So the next thing I'm going to do is install my system, sort out the wiring, make sure everything is going where it should, and then we'll see if the Ranger will key up. Then I'll move on from there. All right, I've been working on and off a couple days on this Ranger, and I finally have it to where it's operating fine. It came in here with the one request, and that was to have the D-Lab push-to-talk system installed because the current system didn't operate. After my initial inspection, I took that list of one item to a list of six, and then of course, once I got in there and started doing the work, it turned into a list of 12. So I'm gonna show you everything I did to this Ranger, and then we're gonna give it a test using my NC300 as a monitor. Right, front panel-wise, one item that was on my list was repairing the meter glass. 
it was actually pushed in. I see this quite often on the Rangers. But rather than taking it apart, the fellow in the past decided he was just going to cram some silicone in there to stop it from rattling. Unfortunately, it was still tilted back and interfering with the needle. So that's been taken apart, reseated, and cleaned, and now she looks perfect. Another item on my list, and very important, was to replace the SO239 RF output connector. This is the connector that was installed. It's a overseas model with this gold center conductor. The pin was extremely loose, not making connection with the PL259, which could damage a Ranger. I replaced it with an old stock USA type silver jacket with a Teflon insulator. It'll last forever. This item was added to the list. It's the two pin crystal socket that Johnson uses to power your external Dow key relay. Here's the one that was installed. The contacts are corroded and spread and not making contact. This is a common failure, something to keep an eye on when you get one of these Johnson transmitters. Don't try to put things in here or glue in your leads. Replace the connector for reliability because you want that Dow key to switch when you go to transmit mode. I also removed the three prong grounded cord that was on this Ranger. They had crammed a fuse inside which was not accessible. I changed out the cord and the plug to the Johnson style that has the internal fuses. Well there was quite a bit going on on this side of the Ranger that I need to cover. If you recall in shipping the power transformer had actually pulled up from the chassis and was leaning. I was able to loosen this hardware push him back into place. Then we move on to the push to talk area. There was a set of relays sitting on top of this platform glued into place and it was not operational. So that's all been removed and I have the new D-Lab K2 push to talk system installed in the place of the old 6AX5 rectifier tube. So as I stated the D-Lab K2 push to talk system plugs into the socket that used to be occupied by the 6AX5 rectifier tube. In the base, there's a pair of diodes, they're 1N4007s, that provide the function of that rectifier, and then I use the socket to support my new relay system. So this guy actually switches four things. The 120 volt AC for the rear crystal socket, the keyer voltage to put the transmitter into transmit mode, the 6.3 AC volts that goes over to the push to talk lamp and then this one is also switching the bias to the modulator tubes so when you're not transmitting the screens turn off and they do not draw current. Also up here on the platform there is normally a 6AL5 rectifier tube that has been replaced with diodes also and the reason I do that is for stability of your modulator current. This provides a negative bias for your output section and your modulator tubes. When you key up, sometimes this voltage with a 6AL5 will vary. These diodes stiffen that up and give you more reliable modulator current. A few more things I need to go over that I performed on this side of the Ranger. This is your VFO compartment and this is the access hatch. Behind that hatch, under the OA2 tube, is the famous 18K Chernobyl resistor. This is a carbon resistor and over time it starts changing in value and it'll get to the point where it superheats and sometimes catches on fire and damages the internal workings of your VFO compartment. This is a must change. There's no option. I routinely install a 20K 3 watt resistor in its place. Now talking about resistors, if I pull out the 5R4 rectifier you're going to see another resistor sitting here. That is the 20K 50 watt resistor that's normally underneath the chassis of the Ranger for adjusting your modulator current. I'd highly suggest that you relocate that resistor to the top of the chassis so that the heat can escape. Under the chassis it's trapped and it will eventually damage the wiring under your radio and cause a big mess. So this is on a piece of threaded rod and I use Teflon wire that goes down to the points where it was originally connected. Now we're looking at the modulation section of the Ranger. 
When the radio came to the shop, it had a pair of these Tung Sol 5881s installed. Good looking tubes, but unfortunately, they're only rated at 360 volts plate. The Ranger delivers 600 volts to those output tubes, so you know what would happen to these in a short period of time. I've installed a pair of old stock 6L6s, which were the original type tubes that the Ranger used as well as 1614s. Now the bottom side of the Ranger, I did have to change out a few out of tolerance resistors. There's a 470 ohm resistor down here by the shield that feeds the 6CL6. It was double the value that it should be. But the area that always has problems is the clamper circuit. And that was not working in this Ranger. There's three 33K resistors in parallel to try to achieve 11K that feeds that clamper tube. This is the original resistors that came out and they measure over 15K so they've drifted out of tolerance. I had to change out those resistors in the clamper tube and that restored the function. And of course down in this area this is where that 20K resistor would normally reside and that is now topside. This radio also suffered from weak grid current and no grid current on 80 meters. That turned out to be an oxidized band switch. I hit that with some deoxid and she sprang back to life. Okay, I think that pretty much sums up all the work that I did to this Ranger. Remember, it came in here for just push to talk. But when you get into these projects, one thing always leads to another. You'll fix something, you'll say, oh, look at that. Well, how about that? And that's what this one turned into. But I don't like these radios to leave the shop if they have any problems, because guess what? I'm gonna hear about it. So I've got my National 300 set up over here. I'm gonna slide the Ranger back into the cabinet and we're gonna to listen to the audio. All right, test time. The owner told me his primary band is 80 meters, so that's where we're gonna test the Ranger. So here is my grid current. So you got all kinds of grid drive. Go to plate. Dip it. A little over 40 watts, about 50 watts or so. You can see my modulator current is dead until I key. That's the screens being turned off by the push to talk system. And then we're talking. Hello. One, two, three, four. Hello, one, two. Hello, one, two. Hello, one, two, three. Monitoring on the National 300, and you can see our modulation swing over here on the watt meter. She's working good. All right, another Ranger ready for the airwaves. As you guys can tell, this is pretty much a labor of love. You're never going to make a lot of money working on these radios. They're not as straightforward as a guitar amp. There's a lot of things going on in these radios, a lot of failure modes due to age. But what I enjoy the most is hearing the rig play again and know that it's going to be back on the air and enjoyed by a fellow ham operator.